All right. Hello. Hello, everybody out there in TV land. How's it going? How are we doing? I'm doing well. I mean, I'm, you weren't asking me. You were asking them. No, I, I was asking you. Oh, you were asking Yes, me? we're on a podcast together. I don't know if you know that. Oh, it's but, you and me as the host. Well, but you were looking into the camera. It's called I Two Gay Mats. And so I figured you were asking the people. How the are you, Matt Steele? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. I think it's been a busy weekend, which has been nice. You know, busy, but not in a bad way. But just like having having little social engagements every every moment. Social engagement? I mean, you know, just having things to do, having a plan. You know, I like a plan. I like getting out into the world in this, you know, post, you know, vaccinated state that I'm in. Because I've just got, I got my double booster thing. And <gasps> when you, did you get it? I mean, I got it a while ago. <laughs> like, it's been two weeks now, so it's probably fully in the Okay. Thing. Yeah, so I got now, it like what, like three weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. So it's now like I feel more safe in the world. Wow. You know, and you know how I feel about safety. Uh, you are a big fan of safety. I love safety. You would move to safety town if you could, which was a, did your town have like a safety town? No. Like we had a thing like behind the library. Kids would go to, it was called safety town. And it was like where you learned like road directions, like oh. how to stop at a stop sign. Oh. And like how to look both ways before crossing the street. It was no. very fun. It was, you did it when you were like five. Four. Did you see that? Uh, speaking of crossing the street, jaywalking has been decriminalized in California. No way. Yes, you can jaywalk if you want. Oh, baby, <laughs> I'm running through the streets. Looking forward to that. Oh, it's going to be a wild time. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. This New Yorker is here, LA. All right. All right. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to another Two Gay Mats podcast. It's Matt Steele. It's Matt Palmer. And we are in October. And as someone in the ch- live chat rudely reminded us, there are only three months left of the year. I don't find that rude. Me. I don't find it devastating. I find it ta- rude. Moderators, kick them out. <laughs> don't do it. Time moves forward. That's no one's fault. Matt Steele. Yes. How was your week? My week was good. Yes. Did a lot of cute things. Monday, I went to, uh, to WeHo on Monday, actually, oh. to hang out with my friend Arthur because he was taking a New York trip. Uh, he was flying out to see uh, Leah. He's a big Leah Michelle stan. Uh, so he was flying out to see her like third row center orchestra seat in Funny Girl. So I wanted to give him a fair send off. So All right. we, we went to Musical Mondays. And also we it was the day after the Big Brother finale. So we were kind of low key hoping that like the cast members would go out to her <laughs> that night and we would like run into them. Oh my God. Uh, but no, they were trapped in Todrick's house like Jesus the cast members Christ. are nowadays. Um, and what else did I do? I got a haircut cut on Wednesday. Oh, I went to the suit. Great. Thank you very much. Looks lovely. Um, and then I had a bunch of auditions that I filmed. Yes. And they all went fine. Cool. I guess I watched them back and I was like, oh, look at that talent. Um, <laughs> And then I just worked for the most part. I can't think. Oh, and I went to the cinema twice. What'd two, you see? Two days in a row. I mean, we'll get, we'll get to, to it. it, Matt Palmer. All right, just making sure. I didn't Don't know. If rush the podcast. One of them could not be your, you know, giving you moments if one of them was bad. <laughs> None of them were bad. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to, I have a bunch of giving me moments actually. Oh God. So let's get on with the podcast uh, so we can get to giving me moments soon. So we're just going to skip what you did no, this week. No, we're going to talk to <laughs> me because we are two hosts and I am one of the two. Okay. So for me, I had a lovely weekend as I mentioned earlier. On Friday, I went and uh, saw bros in theaters, mm-hmm. which I will be talking about a bit later as well. Uh, and then Saturday, I uh, hung out with Janie for a bit and then we went to the theater to see Jag Little Pill the musical, mm-hmm. which you know, Alanis Morissette's musical. The book was written by Diablo Cody. Very fun to watch that. Discuss that a little later as well. Okay. Well, I guess we can discuss it now. I love the music so much. Of course. You know how I feel about Jagged Little Pill. Of course. The story was good, and I could see if you were reading it on Wikipedia, as you said you have, that it could seem like a lot. Uh huh. And I will say it seemed to make more sense watching it unfold in front of you. Um, I did have some critiques. I felt like the the dancers. <laughs> We're kind of giving me... You were here when we watched Diana, right? Yeah. It was kind of the dancing from Diana. Oh, I love that. Where it's like, we're singing uh, Head of Our Feet or Hand in My Pocket, and you are like TikTok dancing to every single word that Alanis oh. has written. Oh. And it's like, guys, this is a pop rock song from 1995. I need you to cool it. <laughs> you need to really reel it the fuck in. Who choreographed like this? Like you felt it was too choreographed? Oh, like every move. It was like, and it was all limbs and arms and like on every word oh. that's being said. Yeah, behind TikTok like, dancing, just all upper body. It 
it just was not, I felt, appropriate to what uh, the, these incredible Alanis Morissette songs. And there were some incredible choreographed moments, like Uninvited, especially the way that was done. Was oh, really what was incredible. that choreography like? That was, I mean. Tap dancing? It's, no, but it's just like, <laughs> it's hard to explain. It basically, like, the dancer represented the lead. Oh, the there mom. was dancing there in was the dan- Uninvited. There was, but it was, like, more interpretive, and they were, like, attached. And okay. It was like beautiful, a, a, a lyrical It moment. was less, but it's like. That makes sense. And my issue with the production is it kind of felt like someone had seen a lot of popular topical theater. Like they'd seen Dear Evan Hansen. They had seen Next to Normal. They had seen American Idiot and kind of just blended it up into a blender and made this. And I don't think that's a bad thing per se, but when the music is so strong, I would have liked it to feel a little bit more original. Um, I also felt like for Forgiven, they were like, and then she goes into a church. And it's like, okay, yes. (laughs) We all know the lyrics to Forgiven. We know what she's going to sing. And I say that, but like, the lead of the mom who uh, I forget her name. Oh, her name was Mary Jane in the show mm-hmm. singing her fucking face off. And like, who was it? Do you know her name? I don't know. Her, her name is Heidi and she went to Duke. I don't know her last name. Okay. But she was singing her face off. She did such an incredible job in that bridge of forgiven. And she and uh, the actress that played Joe, I felt like were like, okay, despite my musical theater training, this is an Alanis Morissette show. I'll be doing my weird vowels like Alanis does. Uh, give I'll me a weird vowel. Jumping up into my uh, upper register like Lannis does all of this when some of the actors I felt like the men specifically which I realized this would be a harder show to be in as a man because you're not singing Alanis's range it's like they were sticking to real vowel sounds it's like no those words don't even rhyme anymore because you're not singing it like Alanis uh, so I don't know it was definitely more good than bad um, but Heidi Blink and Staff uh, Heidi Blinkenstaff. Okay, I forget, great. I hear she's amazing in everything she's in. I forget what she's been in on Broadway. Okay. But like, she has a lot of fans. I've she's never seen her in anything. Though. unbelievable. Okay. The vocal out of this world. So hey, hats off to you, Heidi from Duke. There's no notes about the performances, really. I have some issues with, like, the staging and how it all went. But the book being written by Diablo Cody, you could tell... Like the barbs that were like very darkly comedic were like very well done and well placed and like didn't seem to upset the flow. So there's pros and cons. I would say definitely go see it. But it wasn't like the flawless victory like the album is. Well, I mean, the album is a moment. It's like an album of a lifetime. So I did that on Saturday. And then today uh, we went over to Jackson's sister's house. She and her husband just got a new dog named Tato, short Mm. for potato. Oh, that's so cute. It is very cute. It's a little golden doodle. And it was lovely to meet and hang out with her. And then came back here, got all gussied up in that I, you know, cut my hair and took a shower. Okay. And uh, now I'm here with, with you talking about people on a podcast. I love how all the things you do during your week are all like Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> and like, whereas like me, I don't do anything Saturday, no. Sunday, except for work. Well, cause I'm working during the week and like, I'll yeah. do some, I'll like go visit friends to watch the bachelorette and things like that. But that's not as fun. It's like my big social events. It's weekend time. It's okay. Weekend time, yeah. Bro. Weekends. I don't do anything except for work and the podcast and weekdays. I thrive. Are you ready to dive in? Let's dive in. We don't have that much news for idiots this week, guys, but we've got to talk about this guy from the Try Guys, whose last name I did not know until last week. His name is Ned Fulmer, and it came out. Apparently, there was a big Reddit thread and conspiracy theory about how Ned Fulmer was cheating on his wife, and he is the one of the four Try Guys. I've watched a few Try Guys videos back when they were at BuzzFeed. Okay, I know them like very high level. I know that Eugene, I believe, is queer and is very hot. <laughs> and then there are the four straight ones. Uh, and this is one of the straight ones whose his whole thing on the show was like, I love my wife, I love my wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. And then these pictures come out of him uh, making out with a girl in a club. And the girl is an employee of their now offshoot Try Guys brand. And I mm. believe she is also a YouTuber of some kind named Alex, who's, a, you know, a fiance to a guy. And so... This is all coming out, and I, for, for someone who, again, has not followed the Try Guys ever, has never been in, I was scrolling through that Instagram. Really? I was like, there, I was like, at Ned Fulmer Exposed, tell me everything. Oh, my I, God. Just because the drama was so crazy? Th- th- I've never <laughs> felt older in my life than I did when all of this Try Guys stuff was happening because like you know I am of a certain age where like I remember BuzzFeed and everything right. but like I didn't actually like deeply care about the like names involved yeah, like, like BuzzFeed yes. and all that stuff like the writers and the, the Try Guys I had like I had to look up who the Try Guys were <laughs> I love when it. all this happened and I was like oh yeah I've like seen pictures of them and I just assumed that they were just made videos that where they tried new things That's right. and everything That's so, absolutely so I, right. I knew what they 
did, but I had to like look them up. And the fact that like people knew them all by name, the fact that people were so invested in this story, I was like, oh, whoa, this is like for an age demographic that's a little younger than myself. <laughs> and the thing is, I don't know them personally. If you would ask me, and again, what this person's last name was last week, I wouldn't have known. But the fact that the scandal is about this guy who's like, whole brand, his whole personality is I love my wife. Well, that just goes to show that everyone in entertainment is a fraud. <laughs> we, the 2K mats, sometimes a little bit of a fraud. Matt steal more than me. Listen, listen. <laughs> we act like, oh, we know all this stuff about music. I know stuff about music. You do. I don't. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I didn't know what a single was until I started living with you. Hey, but you've learned in that time. And it's, that is the purpose of 2K Maths. The fact that you are teaching me stuff. I teach you stuff. Yes. And that's beautiful. But like at the end of the day, you know, Matt Steele's a little bit of a fraud. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> and the Try Guys came out and fired this Try Guy. Ned Fulmer is no longer working with the Try Guys as a result of a thorough internal review. We do not see a past path forward together. We thank you for your support as we navigate this change. Apparently, they all knew about this. There was an internal discussion about it uh, because it's, people had noticed like, oh, this person has not been in the past months worth of Try Guys content. Ooh. He's not been like editing out of videos. Like they have been pushing him out of the brand for a while. So this is just becoming public knowledge. But privately, it seems that Ned, his wife, and uh, the Alex lady knew what was going on. Okay. Uh, Ned comes out and says something that is honestly mostly funny because his profile picture on Twitter and Instagram is like him making like a crazy goofy guy surprise face, which makes sense in like 2014. Uh, and he says in his notes app apology family should have always been my priority but I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship he goes on and is like this is about Ariel my wife and I wanted to you know I I feel bad that for the pain I caused blah 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 but consensual workplace relationship is so weird <laughs> like I lost focus I guess he wants to make sure that it's out there that this was consensual this was that, consensual yes you know it's, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary yeah. but except the fact that you are a married person and I don't know the rules of their marriage maybe they're open whatever whatever well I'm sure he just wanted to be like I just want to make sure that there isn't another layer to this that <laughs> right. would get me in more trouble exactly yeah. and so I, I understand that apparently he and his wife had like a cookbook out together and oh, um, no. the former Someone who used to work with them made a TikTok of to Rachel Bloom's You Ruined Everything, You Stupid Bitch, holding up the cookbook when it was like Adam Levine and this guy. It just is like there's so much content about the dramatics of this scandal. And it's just because I think it's a similar way people felt about John Mulaney cheating on his wife when like yeah. a lot of his comedy was about how much he loved his wife. And then magically he leaves her, has a new wife and a baby, you know, immediately. It's just like. You, I guess it's just the the thing to learn from this is don't trust people whose whole thing is how much they love their significant other because no one is trustworthy, because especially I, no man. Because everyone's a fraud. I mean, Everyone in entertainment is a fraud. <laughs> like I, I'm sorry. We're all frauds. I'm not a fraud, sweetie. I'm trying to think of one person who is not a fraud. I'm not that, a fraud. And that is my mother. <laughs> I don't think she's in entertainment, though. But hey, but she's, she's not a fraud. Not a fraud. <laughs> that does stand up. So that really, I, that I probably spent half my work day looking at the stuff. Okay. I'm telling you, I was just like, I need to know all the details. I don't know why it resonated so much for me. I think it's so interesting how like last week it was the Adam Levine cheating on his wife yes. scandal, which upset the older millennials. <laughs> and then this week was the Try Guys guy having an affair on, uh, from, um, with, on his wife, um, yeah. which upset the younger millennials. Right. What's next week going to be? I don't what's know. The, what's going to upset it's the older Gen Z? Because the Gen Z people, like, who do they look up to? Like, Billie Eilish? These are people who are just dating each other, not True. people with, like, families and kids. So it'll probably happen later on in their lives. So something to look forward to for our young fans. Okay. Um, <laughs> next up, news for Matt Steele. Who won Big Brother 24, Matt Steele? The Steel? winner of Big Brother 24 is none other than Miss Michigan and Miss Congeniality. I forget what year. <laughs> Taylor. Hail. She is the first black woman to win a regular season of Big Brother in 24 seasons. That is wild. It is wild. It is amazing. And what an arc she had. I mean, I will talk about it. Give me <laughs> moments. But the fact that this blew up so much on the internet, the fact that like Janet Jackson yes. was like commenting on her Instagram, like wild that this blew up so much in, at least in my circles Absolutely. of social media. Like so many people were talking about it. I I think it was obviously her being the first black woman winner, but also the fact that 
she was faced with so much adversity initially in the house. Like, even as people who don't watch the show, I knew that people were up against her and that they hated her being this gorgeous, you know, black w- woman who was uh, Miss Congeniality, who was a pageant girl. They had turned on her so quickly as of the fact that she rose above. Like, that is a hero's story. Yes. So it resonates with people. Absolutely. And, like, I will tell everyone, like, if there is a recent season that you should watch, because for many years I was kind of like, oh, there isn't really a recent season <laughs> that you should go to like if you want to uh, start the show maybe like go to 10 <laughs> but now I can tell people like oh if you want an introduction of the show and you want to watch a recent season 24 it's and a great season do you think you get all of the importance and like of her, why her win is so exciting from watching just the tv show and not having the background and of not the knowing the history yes we'll t- uh I think so. Okay. I think the the arc is still in the edited episode. Good. It's so hard, like, because sometimes as a person who follows the feeds so closely, like, it's hard sometimes to differentiate between like, was this just shown on the show, or mm. like, or or was this like. Because there are some times where I know something has happened and I assume everyone else does too. But like if it's not on the edited show, like the people who won't watch only the edited show don't know. So sometimes it's hard to figure out what people know and what they don't. Yeah. Big Brother. That's Um, true. But yeah, it's I mean, we'll talk about it. But what an arc. I will tell you the first thing I did once you left my house on Sunday was look up. I was like, please, Taylor fucking win. Like, I pray it's Taylor because I knew it was down to Taylor Monty. And so I was like, it seems like from what Steele has told me. Taylor's winning this thing. And she really, it just was like, for, again, for someone that I have not watched on television for one frame, I love her so much. <laughs> I hope she and uh, that hot Joseph man oh ride off into the sunset together. Like I literally, I have seen so much of it on my Twitter feed that Twitter just recommends like Jaylor content to me. And I'm like, how did I get here? And Jaylor, they both know we need to make content. Honestly. Every single thing they are putting out there is them together being affectionate. They could hate each other for all I know. They could, <laughs> they could be frauds for all I know and they could be lying. But hey, whatever they're selling, I'm buying. Do you think they're going to date really? I would I would think so. I don't know. Must. I don't know. I hope so. And also wait, n- not to get into all of this. What happened with the, like, oh, I made out with Monty. Like, how did she end things with him so quickly and get back with this Joseph guy? Like, w- did stuff come out about Monty and what he was saying that got back to her? Like, I need that. Inf- that's the information I am missing. Uh, we don't know exactly how it happened. They're still, like, hanging out because they're all, like, still hanging out as friends as yeah. a group running around L.A. and everything. Not right. going to WeHo where I am on <laughs> Monday nights, but whatever. Um, but uh, it, she has made it known in interviews that she has given, like, Monty and I... We we are leaving it in the Big Brother house. Mm. Thank you very much. Oh wow! All right. Uh, so it's like okay, but also there's a rumor that like Monty and Amira, who I really love Amira, mm. um, have like gotten together. We okay. don't know. It's it's nothing but rumors from here on out when it comes to the cast. Well, all I can say is I hope Taylor Hale stays away from Todrick. I know he loves to collect these Big Brother people as friends. Girl, she's living in his house she, right well, now. Well, he's getting kicked out of it soon, so it doesn't really I'm matter. So he's got to pay that rent. So awkward. It's really too bad. Uh, Dua Lipa and Trevor Noah were. But there was a possibility they were dating. This is the order of operations here. They were seen out. They shared a kiss at some point. People assumed they were dating. Trevor Noah then announces that he is leaving The Daily Show, Mm -hmm. uh, in which I saw a very funny tweet. I wish I could remember the author where someone tweeted Dua Lipa, why did none of your men ever have jobs? (laughs) Because she was with that little Hadid boy, Anwar, beforehand. Uh, And then, according to their reps to People Magazine, they're just friends. And I'm like... I don't know what's happening here, but I don't think in my head I ever was going to put Trevor Noah and Dua Lipa together. But, you know, if they like it, I love it. If they're really dating, I'm happy for them. It's a it's an age gap, but she's like 27, 28. So it shouldn't yeah, be so. It's fine. So, and how old is he? Like, he's, he's not like that old. He's like 38. Oh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, if I was 27 fine. going on a date with a 38-year-old, you'd be like, okay. But if it was Trevor Noah, I'd be like, you'd be like, Get it. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's a, cute. He is very cute. I feel like there was a stretch of my time in dating when I would go on dates with men who were not black. If we, And whenever we'd go on this date, they would talk about how they had a crush specifically on Trevor Noah. And it's like, look, if this is your covert set way of saying, like, I'm interested in black people, it's like, we're on a fucking date. Like, we don't need to go <laughs> back over this. So that's always my first thought when I think of Trevor Noah, is that the white gays love him. Okay, interesting <laughs> the white thought. gays are into okay. him. Um, all right. Dahmer, your Matt Steele starring vehicle, is, I believe now, Netflix's Netflix's biggest series debut on record. Well, you're welcome, Dahmer. (laughs) 
mean, it's all because of me, baby. It's because it, the Cathy's were tuning in. They really were. <laughs> and I just, you know, congratulations. Uh, I'm glad that you're in a hit thing. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's very exciting. Hey, it's only two minutes, but baby, it's a whopping two minutes. It's, hey, you do a beautiful job. Thank you. Do a beautiful job. Um, did you listen to Sam Smith and Kim Petras' Unholy? I did. We got an email my heart question. Oh, we it. did. Okay, well, we'll discuss it soon. But uh, spoiler alert, it's supposed to debut at number two on the Hot 100. Good for everybody. No, it's been number one on Spotify for such a long time. So I think Kim Petras is like the most successful trans artist on Spotify ever. Like has the highest peaking artist. Um, like oh, like six hundredth in the world kind of thing. She's the highest peaking. Okay, That's really girl, exciting. you work. Very exciting for and Sam. Is it going to like go number one and knock as it was down? The thing is, number two, number one is not as it was right now. It's a song by Steve Lacey called "Bad Habits." We love uh, the, Steve Lacey. We love we love anyone who's not Harry Styles on the Hot 100 at this point because fifteen weeks. Is enough. <laughs> yes. Enough. It's like we support Harry Styles, whatever. But like that song 15 is cute. Weeks, Fifteen weeks for that. Fifteen weeks. I think he has better singles. Oh my I, god! Absolutely. I like the new one better. The um the sushi restaurant one and also sushi restaurant's a good song. Yeah. There's a couple of Harry Styles. Watermelon sugar is better. I, as it was is fine. We've given it a lot. Yes. All right. Calm down, people. Got to calm down. Uh, and lastly, just in sad news. Coolio has passed away at 59. That is devastating. Devastating. That is such like 90s nostalgia for me as a child. Did I know any of Coolio's music? No, but like he was oh, such a- You pl- knew Gangster's Paradise. Of course I knew okay, that. I mean, that's a classic oh. piece of music, a yes. classic music video where he's rapping and Michelle Pfeiffer's just sitting there looking hot. Yes, and the chair's backwards. That's yes. why I remember about uh, She mine. sits down. Oh, uh, girl, get it. Classic. But um, it's like devastating because he was like, he did so many- like broad he had a, such a wide reach in terms of like entertainment like mm. like he, I remember him being like on the Muppet show and like d- doing a bunch of stuff on Nickelodeon he did the and like, Keenan and Cal theme song yes he did the Keenan and Cal theme yep. song and while also doing like like Gangster's Paradise and so it was just it was really sad I mean it would, it would be sad regardless but it was just really sad for me because I was like that's like my childhood right. like that image of him and he was only 59 years old I believe yeah he passed away of a heart attack. It's just as like, I feel like someone had tweeted about how uh, life expectancy for black men is the lowest of any demographic. Like, I think the average life expectancy is like 72 or something. So him and like DMX, I just feel like there are mm. men, black men of a certain age passing away. And it's always like a little heartbreaking because it's like you want to have people. I don't know. It's just it's just a heartbreaking statistic that we're seeing come true in the entertainment sphere Coolio had great music. Fantastic Voyage is also a great song. I just remember him from growing up and the fact that people we remember from growing up are now passing away is just like... I can't handle that fact at all. Because you would... You know, it's always sad when anyone passes away, but a lot of it's like older actresses and they're like 80s and 90s. So the fact that people are like not even hitting 60 Mm -hmm. of people that we grew up with, it's just... It's jarring. And it's like making sense because, you know, 50s and 60s, that is like a, a very big time for men to suddenly die, like especially mm. with like heart disease or something like that. Right. Um. So, but it's just it's so sad that it's, it's like you know, people that we grew up with. Absolutely. It's just it's hard to stomach. And yeah. So rest in peace to Coolio. Hearts going out to his family and friends. Do you have any other news for idiots you want to share with the people? Oh, God, I don't think so. This flew by. I know. Well, we have a lot of emails and we have a lot of giving you moments, apparently. So oh, we do. I have like three giving you moments. <laughs> Great. So we're going to take a quick break and then be back with more 2 Game Maths, the podcast. All right, we're ready. All right, we're ready. We're back. We're back. And this is Email My Heart. This is the section of the podcast where you can ask us anything you want via email or... Or you can comment below if you are watching this on YouTube. Yes. If you would like to email us, you can email us at two game at gmail.com to spell T W O. So this question comes to us from Durga, who I believe has sent us emails like three weeks in a row. It's hey, like, Durga's, Durga's got on a, questions. She's got questions. The new Barbara Walters baby. <laughs> All right, Durga says, Hey Matt, at this point it feels like I'm going to be emailing every week with something new, but the new Sam Smith song, Unholy, I don't know what it is about songs with the word holy in it, <laughs> but I am obsessed with it. It's such an earworm and it's sexy and fun in a way I wasn't expecting from Sam. Between this and me looping Good For You by Selena Gomez, mm. this has been a very Slytherin-esque week, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm sure it makes sense to Harry Potter people. Totally. Uh, No real question, but what are your thoughts about this song or Sam Smith's sound or basically anything? I uh, think the song is good. I think it's great. It's growing on me. I feel like when I first heard it, I might have been a a taste underwhelmed, but it is very listenable. I think the fact that it's so short makes you want to listen to it over and over again. I don't know. I feel like it's Sam's definitely 
just trying out new sounds. The music video has a lot of budget, which we appreciate. And I just love seeing a queer person find success after coming out. Because for such a long time, obviously, Sam Smith has always been successful. They've never, like, not had some sort of success. But mm-hmm. compared to when Sam Smith first came on the scene, it was like the general public could think of him as like, the, oh, the stay with me guy, or oh, if, if I'm not the only one guy. Um, or, But Sam is a non-binary person who has come out as queer, and we should be, I don't know. I want more success for them because the vocals are there. Oh, yeah. The songs are there. And I feel like the Love Goes era should have been done so much differently. Beautiful album. What a beautiful album. Yeah. What, you know, the single with Normani, How Do You Sleep? Like, hits were lined up, and I feel like the ball was dropped. And so now it seems like Sam... And their label has all of the ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Unholy is going to be the beginning of a great era from Sam. And I'm very excited about it. Yeah, that. I listened to the song and I was like, whoa, was not expecting <laughs> exactly. that from Sam Smith. Which, yes. of course, I found thrilling. And I think the song is really good. I really like it. I will say, like, I do wish it was longer. I know. Like, it's so good. Like, it's short. put that chorus in a gun. Like, it's so <laughs> dark and, like, sexy and evil sounding. I um I have not watched the music video yet, mm. though. But, but no, I really like it. I it's think it's great. really good. It's great. Yeah. And I, we're excited that Sam's going to, you know, debut in the top two. And wait, is this, sorry, is this the first single off of an album? Uh, I believe they put out a song called Love Me More, which might have been like, I don't know if it's the true first single or if we're treating it like Focus, like Ariana treated Focus. These days, who knows? But this to me is the real first single. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. We're going to treat it as such, guys. Yes. All right. So next question comes to us from Chris. Uh, Chris says, hi, Matt, longtime listener, first time emailer. I wanted to reach out to my two favorite Matt's and get their opinion on the newest cast recording hitting the streaming services. Though my favorite Sondheim is Sunday in the Park with George. Sorry, Matt Palmer. Chris, don't apologize for Matt Palmer's bad opinion. You're forgiven, Chris. Listen, (laughs) Chris is correct. Um, I am loving this new recording of Into the Woods. Sarah Bareilles' rendition of Moments in the Woods specifically is giving me moments this week. Why doesn't this video have a billion views any thoughts on this recording or performance and i was like what could he possibly have sent and it was um a it was a youtube video of uh of the into the woods revival Uh. and um i have to say i because i listened to the caster i wasn't really expecting to listen to it Uh because um you know, I was like, oh, it's, just, it's another cast recording of Into the Woods. I've heard Into the Woods a trillion times. I could recite the show by heart. Um, so I was like, oh, I can put off listening to it. But one day I was like, you know what? I'm walking to the bank. Let me just <laughs> pop it in. And okay. so I, was, I gave it a listen. And it's really great. The orchestra sounds really fantastic. The cast is really strong because it's like a cast of superstars. Right. Like, it's a phenomenal cast. And yeah, I think it's really great. Something very smart that they do is they that the other two cast recordings that is like, I wouldn't say a flaw in the other cast recordings, but something that I'm just kind of like, uh, mm. is like they separate every single song by track. Mm. So there isn't like the blend of like, I guess this is goodbye and maybe they're really magic, like on one track. Okay. Like they're on separate tracks, like any moment and moments in the woods are on separate tracks. Mm. Like, so it's like, no, if I just want to listen to like uh first midnight, like then I can just listen to that. I don't have to go right into Giants in the Sky, you know. Okay. Um, so I will say I do enjoy that. No, it's a very good cast recording. That's I great. All I can say, I have not listened to the cast recording. I've heard great things about Sarah Barella specifically. Uh, so uh, you are in good company and thinking that she's amazing there. Um, but I was Rapunzel's prince in Into the Woods Jr. back in eighth grade. So. I will say I did skip the two agonies on the cast recording. Wow. <laughs> My song. I, I'm sorry. Those are the two skips for me. I'm, and wow. everyone loves agony. And I'm like, these are good. And I, I, w- I always, I'm always like, oh, I let's was, get to stay with me. Baby. I was singing agony like my senior year of high school with Jeff Majors. Cause people were like, we loved agony. Listen, like do agony at a thing. What is with people in agony? I think I'm the only person that's just like, okay with agony mm. like i think agony is good and solid and mm. cute when you see it live but like i don't really need to listen to it on the cast recording i'm a people in your eyes that was unrecognizable <laughs> what far more painful than yours when you know you were going <laughs> you. is it all your time? Mm. I think it's good. <laughs> oh, I, I would. That's a cast recording of Into the Woods that I would like to listen exactly. to. Exactly. Because that would be something different. It really would be. Yeah. Do we have another email my heart? We do have another email my heart wow. that we actually got a little bit before we started the podcast. This is from Lincoln. Lincoln says, 
is the customer always right? No. No. Go on. (laughs) Uh, I work in the customer service industry and in a field where I am constantly talked down to by customers. Long story short, I had a resident that locked herself out of her apartment and after driving 45 minutes to my building to let me in, to let me in, she began to curse at me, call me a fucking idiot and berate me for a good 10 minutes. I lost my cool and told her I would not now absolutely not let her in her apartment. I left her and her nappy ass dogs right outside and went home. The next day I was fired, but I'm strangely not mad. I feel like we need to be more kind to the people who serve us, not matter, no matter what industry. Do you feel there is an exception to this? My company did not have my back at all, and it feels like they think this is okay to be berated Mm -mm. just because you are in a position of service. We are all human and can only take so much. Thank you. Lincoln, I ain't mad at you. No, I agree (laughs) with you. I feel like the only thing that would have stopped me from doing exactly what you did is being like, well, I have rent to pay. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Sure. I need to pay this rent. I don't want to have this bad moment ruin my income. But that customer deserved whatever was coming to them. Like, that is no way to speak to someone who was helping you. And again, if there is a way to get out of those situations without losing your cool, you've got to report them. you got to tell your employer, and they should, and if it's an employer you would want to continue working with, they should have your back. They should talk to that customer and say that's completely unacceptable because yeah. it is. And the fact that they completely just went with the customer's always right and didn't have your back in the slightest means that while it's unfortunate to not have the job and to not have a job you were expecting to have, you did the right thing. You don't want to be working in a company that's not going to, you know, try to stop you from being violently harassed. Yeah, the, like, com- the company should have had your back for for it. I, right. Uh, but you know what? The thing is, Lincoln, like, as long as you're not mad about it and you're like, you know what? I'm glad I'm not working there anymore. Then that's all that matters, really. Right. Like, like the fact that you still feel content with your decision and you're like, you know what? It's time to move on to greener pastures. Right. Then, then, hey, that's what matters. Exactly. You'll so. find something else and they will treat you better. And I'm sorry you were put in that situation because it was not fair and not okay. And uh, we all say hindsight 2020. But again, if you're not sweating, losing the job, continue not sweating it. You'll yeah, find something. Exactly. Better. Do you have to deal with like difficult people on your job? Like I do, but a lot less. I've moved within my company in the past like year and a half, two years. But before I was kind of the front lines. Like it was a lot of like emails from clients asking for things. Mm. And now I'm a little bit more behind the scenes. More like, oh, we want to make this software a little better. I will design how it should look. And sometimes, unfortunately, some clients get my direct contact. I'm like, oh, no. You're like, oh. <laughs> but and you, you're like, well, I'll direct this to someone else. I mean, you, sometimes I do that, but usually I try to help. But anyways, I am not in a position of having to deal with the customers directly. Oh, you mm. are, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm good at it. I just talk over them. Like, if mm. a customer is just, like, being a dick to me, I just find just a plow. Because if they're going to plow through me, I'm going to plow through back oh. then. And I'm going to pretend like it's not happening <laughs> and just plow through them. Like, how do they react to that? Uh, usually someone gives up, and usually it's them. <laughs> I love it. Like, like I just like <laughs> plow through it. Just like, okay, well, on this menu, like, da da da, I can get that fixed. Da da da. And if they still want to complain about it, it's just like, yep, getting this fixed right now. Thank you. <laughs> like, it's because there's no point in like arguing or hashing. The thing with that customers at restaurants like don't understand is just like. Guys, it's not the end of the world. I know. Like this, this is this is such an easy fix, and you make it harder on yourselves. Right. Like when you want to really complain about something, like hardcore, mm. and harp on it forever. It's like, oh no, this is so easily fixable. Oh my god! Yesterday I came home. I'm t- totally throwing Travis under the bus. <laughs> whatever. My my <laughs> we new love roommate. Travis. He works at a restaurant. Um. Who, by the way, guess who came into his restaurant one day? Mariah. No. Oh. Better. Don't say that. Michael from Big Brother. Anyway. <laughs> I can't Beast believe Michael. you said that. Hey, Mariah has five Grammys. Michael has nine comp wins in a season, I don't baby. think comp wins. <laughs> okay, let's go on. Anyway, uh, so yesterday I come home from work and he was like home from work. And I was like, oh, how was your day? And he was like, good. I got really passive aggressive with a customer today, <laughs> but I didn't really mind it. I was, I was content with the decision I made. And I was like, what happened? And they were like, well, they ordered... Uh, like the calamari and our calamari comes as sort of like a salad. Like it comes on greens and with like a little dressing tossed on top and everything. And, and it says that in the menu, like this is what it's going to come with. So I come out with the calamari and, uh, they are like, Oh, what is that? And I was like, Oh, this is the calamari. And they were like, Oh, I'm not going to like that. 
take it back. Uh, and wait, and he was like, oh, well, did you not want the calamari? And they were just like, oh, I'm not going to like that. And he was just like, OK, well, it's fine. I'll waste this for you. <laughs> and then just walked away. Good for you, Travis. And I was like, hey, as long as you felt good about yourself. Truly. And he was like, I did. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do, guys. Matt Steele. Yes. Oh, gosh. Everyone hunker down because this is probably going to be a while. What? Is you're giving me moments this week. So as I told you, I went to the cinema twice this week. Uh-huh. First, I saw the motion picture of uh, the uh, TMZ's, you know, <laughs> of the the most scandalous motion picture of the year, and that yes. is "Don't Worry, Darling." Yes. And guys, I enjoyed it. I don't understand okay. why the reviews are like bashing it so much. I thought it was good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it. I can't. T- I can't say anything. Someone back. comment below and tell me why you didn't like. Don't worry, darling, because I thought it was good. But I also saw another movie, a okay. horror movie called Pearl, mm. and it was uh, directed by I believe T West is the director's name, and it was co-written by T West and this actress named Mia Goth, and mm. it's a really really fun story. It is. Um, it is. It's about a young girl who lives in, on a farm in 1918, and she's desperate to become an actress, but okay. she's sort of trapped on the farm with her parents, uh, and she really can't go anywhere because it's during the flu pandemic, which was oh. a little triggering to watch. Yes. <laughs> but like, uh, and but she desperately, desperately wants to become a movie star, okay. and. Uh, and um, it, the whole story is told in like a 1930s, uh, like old fashioned movie kind of way. Like she's mm. on bed praying like, please, God, please let me be a star. So it's like has a very innocent f- and sweet feel to it. Like right. Darling feel to it. But she's also a murderer. <laughs> and so she <laughs> figures that the best way to become a star is to murder people. And that's what she does. And it's so much fun. This girl, Mia Goth, <laughs> gives like such a mind-blowingly good performance. It's, she has this monologue that's like 10 minutes long and the camera does not pan away from her. And it's kind of like, girl, of course you wrote this for yourself. <laughs> um, she's like, give me a monologue and don't cut away from me. And it, she just nails it so completely. She nails the style of the movie down so well. Like wow. really phenomenal performance. But guys, let's talk about the moment of the week, and that is the victorious moment for Taylor Hale again, a Miss Congeniality from mm. Miss USA Pageant, Miss Michigan, and the Big Brother 24 winner. Because what a moment it was to see her win live on television. She, in case you haven't been watching or following this season, she started off in the house, and immediately all the girls disliked her because it started with this one girl, Paloma, and she was like, I don't like her. She's a pageant girl. And you know oh how like straight God. people have a thing against like pageant people? They're like, she's a pageant girl, so she's definitely fake. She's definitely fake. And in Big Brother, like you go into the house and you need to find people to target. So if someone's like, hey, I don't like this person, the thing that people tend to do is go, oh, yeah, I hate them, too. Oh, and my God. It just suddenly quickly became such a pile on for her to the point where she was ostracized. The things that people were saying behind her back were so bad. Um, and it was just really hard for her. And she was in danger of going so many times in the beginning of the season. But then an alliance formed to like protect her. And she somehow made it to final two through her social skills. And at the final two, she gave the greatest final plea you will ever hear in a season of Big Brother. That I like, watched. Of course she did. She literally does this for a living. Right. She is a pageant girl. She is designed to like be able to come up with beautiful and brilliant answers on the mm. spot that move you and encourage you to vote for her. The thing that she did that was so great that I commend her for so much is that she did not pretend she did not make an argument for herself to win by pretending she played this game that she didn't play. Cause mm. a lot of times like that's what someone will do. They'll be like, well, I was responsible for this right. strategic move. I was, res- was responsible for this strategic move. And it's kind of like, were you <laughs> like, you're kind of like fudging it a little bit. No, she didn't do any of that. She instead argued for the game that she did play. And that game was a 
beautifully social game because as the season went along, she developed such a personal and beautiful relationship with each individual person. So many of these people hated her in the beginning of the season, and she found a way to nurture each and every one of those individual relationships mm. in such a beautiful and brilliant way to the point where she gets to the end, and even though she was not the most like strategic player, right. she didn't have many competition wins. But still, at the end of the day, you're just like, I have to vote for her because... It, she gave, I think, the most impressive social game of any player that's like ever played the game wow. or like won the game. Like her social game was so incredible in the way she nurtured her relationships and such an amazing thing she said in her speech <laughs> was yeah. she essentially pointed to Monty, who was second place, who did play a very good game as well. Like mm. if he won, it would be like hats off to you. It was right. a very good game. But the, his game was very similar to winners of the last couple years, like from Big Brother 20 onward. It's like you won a few comps, you, you know, positioned yourself socially relatively well. You weren't the biggest threat, but like you didn't do nothing. Like you played a very pragmatic game. And there was like one big game move in getting out Michael that Monty did, which he deserves credit for. Mm. Um, but she was like, do you want to award the same thing again and again, or do you want to award something different? Wow. And that to me was such a compelling argument. It just, it just made me want to go, yes, I want to see like something new win Big Brother that hasn't won in a while. And right. so that was such a compelling argument, even though the jury has admitted that they were voting for Taylor no of matter course. what. Like they came into the <laughs> finale knowing that they were gonna vote for Taylor. But like if I was in that jury and I was thinking of not voting for Taylor, it's like, girl, this swayed the fuck out of me. Like wow. it was such a brilliant speech. And then to see her finally win, it was just in Big Brother, we've had so many winners that's like, of course, yes, great win, good game, this is understandable, this is deserving and everything. And you're like, okay, we're ending this season on a relative high, but not the most thrilling high. But this was the first time in so long where this win felt so cathartic mm. and 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 just thrilling to watch when you see the journey from beginning to end. And just seeing how she's blowing up, like, as a persona is oh just my God. so she's exciting. She's everywhere. It's, she's everywhere. And so it was just an amazing final plea speech. The way she answered those questions, the way she talked to it, she's like, Monty got so much blood on his hands with his moves, but I bled out. <laughs> and, and she talked about how she was like, I, love her. I was on the block six times nominated on eviction night and the other person always <laughs> went home. And she's like, and, be, and I feel like people were using me as a shield so much mm. this season and I was being used as an object, but I realized in this process that I am not a shield. I am a sword. Yes. I am not a victim. Dumb, I am a victor. And then of course it cuts to Joseph. <laughs> like so look, happy. like fucking like with tears in his eyes. Oh. And I'm just like, girl, if a guy ever looked at me like that, <laughs> oh, like what a just a great finale. And I can't recommend this season enough. Wow. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes <laughs> the two gay mats. Big Brother Saga it took, for 2022. You know what? It took a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> to get to this point, but at least it's a winner that we all can be happy about, even if we don't watch the show. And she was the first winner to also win America's Favorite Player, wasn't she? Yes, she was the first winner to win America's Favorite Player, and she's also the first winner since Maggie Season 6 in 2005 that won the game without winning uh, parts one or two of the final head of household mm. competition. Like she just broke so many stats and it was, it was just such a, she broke this for years starting in season four, the winners went girl, boy, girl, boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, 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 boy. And it was see, and then it went girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, boy. And if a, a boy had won, right. it would have followed Kept the pattern. Up. She broke that pattern. She broke so many like barriers in this game. And obviously this game like doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of the world. But when you're a loser like me, it feels who really, good. It feels good. It feels good. This Take the things good. that feel good when you can. Exactly. And I think that's fair. Uh, I also saw a very funny tweet because, again, I only get Jailer tweets now where it was like um, her with Todrick. And, she's, and it says, well, she said everyone next to her gets evicted. <laughs> Which made me laugh. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Well, for me. Yes, what was giving you moments, Matt Palmer? I just have to say, as I mentioned earlier, I went and saw Bros. Uh-huh. 
And my, oh my, bros is so many things that are amazing about bros. Obviously, it's a breakthrough queer story with all this backing, major motion picture. It's exciting. There are so many uh, queer actors in it. Every main character is a queer actor besides like the cameos and stuff. Um, I'm, it's really beautiful for reasons even before you go and see it. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most legitimately funny movies I have seen in a theater in such a long time. Like... The jokes are so quick as someone who loves the happy endings, loves the 30 Rock. I And I've always liked Billy on the street, but like I was a little part of me was a little nervous. Like, are we getting his like Billy persona like out of 10 the whole film? And I would love that. You're really <laughs> not. He's a he's a podcaster like someone I know. <laughs> uh, but he so when he's like on film doing that and that's a cute intro to the movie is like mm -hmm. him podcasting, explaining his life experience up until that point. Good introduction to the character. Um, but w once he gets through that, he like becomes very much a real person. It seems like a very real depiction of what gay dating in your forties in New York city would be like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like watered down or like tried to be like the edges sanded off to be more palatable for people. And it's truly like objectively hilarious. Like even if some of the things pop culturally, pop culturally, he was poking phone at, I was like, Hey, <laughs> It still is like so sharp and so funny. And like, even if it's a little like cutting, it's never mean spirited. Mm -hmm. And as the second half unfolds and the romance comes to the forefront, it is so well done and so beautiful to see. There's no way to watch it and not feel kind of swept up to the point where like, you know, the point in a rom-com where everything's going so great. Mm -hmm. I'm there and bros. And I'm like, fuck, something bad's going to happen. I was like, no. <laughs> just, I was like, what if it just went great from here on out? And then like, you would be like, where was the conflict? I'd be like, I, no, I literally been like, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no notes. But of course there's a conflict. There's things that fall apart that like tie into what a lot of queer people in our age group or above probably have felt like about having to shrink yourself in certain environments growing up and feeling like, oh, everyone around me, even though I'm so confident, like I've been told all of my life to like, you know, I, I went to musical theater school and I was told mm -hmm. like you have to talk a little different or walk a little different if you want to be marketable, if you want to, you know, people to see you if, and like making art like, oh, it's too gay, it's too niche, X, Y, Z. And so the relationship issue that comes up is something that kind of resonates with that theme. It just is like really well done. And as soon as there are moments near the end where I was like, oh God, if they did what I think they're doing, they're really going over the line where he's like, then takes a turn where it's like, oh no, that was hilarious. And this makes sense. I just cannot recommend it enough. It is a comedy first and foremost. And the fact that rom-coms obviously have a time at the box office these days. It's a struggle. It's no one is hugely famous in this film. But, like, the numbers coming out of it, even though Billy Eichner had a whole tweet thread about, like, you know, I'm very proud of this. Straight people didn't show up, but, like, I'm still happy. Guys, get asses in seats. Yeah. Tell all the straight people around you. The, the movie is actually excellent, and this is going to turn so many people in high-powered positions. They'll be able to point at this thing that, like, flopped as a reason not to put queer but characters like, on it, screen. Like, did it flop, or is it just not number one? I box? mean... Like, like, come on. Like, like, not every movie can be number one. Right. Like, like... I'm so happy because you were worried about it. You I were, was. You were just like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be good, but of course I'm gonna, still going to see it. So I'm so happy that you genuinely loved it so much. Yes. My roommate Travis loved it. He saw it's it. Excellent. Everyone I know who's seen it like loved it. I am seeing it this week, so I'm very excited. I can like breathe a sigh of relief. Like, okay, it's good. It's, apparently it's, <laughs> it's good. good. Yeah, so I'm, good. I'm so excited to see it. Like, I'm so excited to enjoy seeing it based on not just the things that they're promoting. Right. Like it's the first like gay movie written by like a gay, right? Like a romantic comedy, like produced by a major studio in right. theaters, but also because it's so good. Yes. Like, because it is just a flat out fucking good. That's movie. my only hope for the movie is I feel like even though everything in life, like entertainment wise feels so front loaded these days, mm -hmm. I feel like the high cinema score, the high rotten tomato score, and then the great word of mouth could push this to, being in theaters for a while yeah. hopefully and like more and more people will see it and start singing its praises so this is me doing my part by yeah. saying go see this film it is great even if Billy Eichner's not your favorite which I can understand he is always a little aggressive in the parts I think he would he's play. always funny of course we do but some people <laughs> think he's a lot I did not think he was too much in a way that was off putting he was too much in a way that made sense for his character for the character you know yeah 
I just really loved it. I can't recommend it enough. And also, I just want to see more good rom-coms. And so this has been lovely mm. to see. Yeah. Uh, it's such a shame that like rom-coms and comedies in general, honestly, like are such a hard sell in I theaters. Know. And it's so annoying because it's like, you know, like um, the thing is like, I feel like the highest demographic of movie goers is, is men. Yeah. And so when you say rom-com to a man, they're just like, oh, well, I'm out. Like mm. straight men. They're like, oh, well, I'm out. I know. So it's just, that's such a hard, you know, I feel like like a J-Lo's Marry Me. Like if J-Lo I know. Like, make Marry Me like a huge, huge, huge box office success. Like it's hard out there. It's hard. So the thing is like, we just have to sing the praises. I know. And so people will like want to see it. I'm hopeful. And yeah. just one other thing. We finally started watching the white Lotus. I realized we're over a year late or whatever. Man, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm the first person to ever say that, but it's good. It's intriguing. It is dark, but not in like a way that like hurts your soul. Mm-hmm. It just is like I, the way it opens and then kind of flashbacks. So we, earlier you're like oh I know something's coming and so you're kind of on the edge of your seat and you're worried about everybody but it's I, I would recommend that Mike White who created the show is a, a genius and I'm invested can't wait to see how it wraps up isn't there a, there's gonna be a season two right yes and I think only um Jennifer Coolidge is returning and I think it's like at a different location a whole this. new shebang whole new world that's complex guys all right oh well, I think that's all of my giving me moments. Do you have anything else you want to tell the people? I don't know. Let's throw in some more giving me moments. What else can I think of that's like wonderful and happy? Well, let's not just make stuff up to fill time. <laughs> listen, I be, listen, we'll make stuff up. We're frauds, as we say. I'm not a fraud. <laughs> Reminder. But thank you guys so much for listening and or watching. And we'll be back next week with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. Bye. Bye. Bye.